Okay, so this is day three of the eighth grade uh, second packet in the math section. All right, so we're starting with a task and it says that we work for a cell phone company and we need to promote different cell phone plans. So there's three different plans in the box, plan A, plan B, plan C, and each of them are priced a little bit differently. So we need to be able to explain the differences to customers and we also are asked to visually show the difference between these plans. So to me, the best way to visually show is a graph. Um, and we would need some graph paper. And we have graph paper in our packet, but it says to use it for the next page. So I'm actually, instead of drawing out a graph, um, and what you could do is you could just use part of this one, just maybe, you know, split it in half, use top for cell phone problem and then the bottom for the next page. Um, but I'm actually going to show using Desmos. And then we can graph these and see what they look like. Okay, <clears throat> so let's think about what we need to, to know before we can graph them. So we need some equations. We need the slope, we need the y-intercept, and then we can write equations to graph. And then the second part, part B, is to figure out which one is actually the best for a customer. Okay, so let's take a look. So plan A, plan A has a basic fee of $29.95 per month and then $0.10 cents per text message. So let's think about what we're going to show here. Um, so think about a phone, and each month we have to make a payment. It doesn't matter if you have prepaid or any other plan. It's a monthly thing. So let's compare for just one month. Let's not worry about how long, like how many years or anything like that, just for each month. So in one month, how do these plans look? So plan A, we have a fee and that is per month. So this is one of our keywords for slope, okay? But we have to be careful because there's also this here. So we have two different rates. There's a monthly rate, and then there's a cost per text message. Remember, we're only looking at one month. So let's ignore that one, and let's think about how much it costs just for that one month. So plan A is going to be 29.95 plus... 10 cents per text message. So plus 0 0.10 per text message. So times how many text messages they're going to use. So there's our equation. So this is our slope, m, x, plus b. Okay, we just wrote it in the opposite order, which is fine. Okay, um, plan B, plan B, we have a basic fee of $90.20, so that's a lot more, but unlimited text messages. So that means there's no extra cost, so yeah, nothing, we don't have to pay anything extra for text. Okay, and then the final one, plan C, we have a $49.95 cost per month plus 5 cents per text, so 0 0.05 times however many texts that we have. So C is just cost, cost per month. It could be Y, right? It really is just going to be Y on our um, graph. So I'm just going to rewrite these with y and x, just so it's a little bit easier to understand. So plan C, we have y equals 0 0.10x plus 29.95. Okay, plan B, we have y equals $90.20, and that's it. And plan C, we have y equals 0.05x plus 49.95. Okay, 
So we're going to take those and graph them. Okay, so let's just take the first one. So 0.10x plus 29.95. So we use Desmos again. You can download this. It's free. So y equals 0 0.10, 10 cents times the text, plus that fee, 29.95. Five. Okay, so we need to zoom out so we can see it. Okay, so there it is. And then, you know, we're only, we only care about, um, actually, let's add some labels. So the x axis will be the um, number of texts. Okay. And the y label will be the uh, monthly cost, right? Because we're only looking at one month. Monthly cost. Okay. Let me make that a little bit more bold. All right. So we only care about the positive values because we're talking about money. Okay. So uh, 0.10x plus 29.95. Okay. Plan B. Uh, 90.2. Okay. So plan A we had in blue. Let's change that to blue. Just long hold. Change that to blue, and then the next one was y equals 90.20. And we had that in purple. Do we have a purple? We do. Okay, so there it is. So look at that line. It's a horizontal line. So there is no slope. So slope is zero. Okay, so it doesn't matter. So let's think about what this means. So any number of texts, it doesn't matter because it's unlimited. So it's only always going to cost that same amount, $90.20. Okay, and let's go back and get the last one, plan C is 0.05x plus 49.95. So y equals 0.05x plus 49.95, and we did that one in red. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. So I'm actually going to change a couple things um, so it's easier to see. So the maximum for the X, um, let's leave that. The maximum for the Y is maybe 150. And the minimum for the Y, this is the cost, so zero. Okay, so let's just see if that helps us to, yeah. Now we can see a little bit easier. Okay, so there's some important points here. Any place where those lines cross each other tells us some new information. So, <clears throat> thinking about plan A. So, if we're looking at, I don't know, um, just looking at the, the x-axis here. So, if we're only texting 200 texts a month, okay? So which plan would be the cheapest? So 200 texts a month. Okay, which plan would be the cheapest? So think about that. I'm actually going to save this so we could take a look at it. Okay, so I'm just going to add that. right here okay so here's our here's our graph okay so we have um, okay so you can see everything through it it's kind of interesting um okay so let's just Get rid of that. All right, so let's take a look at this. So we have um, our three cell phone plans. Okay, we have a visual of them. That's what we're supposed to do. And then we need to answer some questions. So um, part B, it says, um, how do we know, how, which one would we recommend for our customer based on their usage or their number of text message that they send? Okay, so again, looking at our graph, 
we have the three lines. So just looking at 200 texts. So if I text only 200 messages a month, which plan is going to be the cheapest? So if I choose plan A, okay, that's here, it's going to cost me about $50. If I choose plan C, it's going to cost about $60. And then plan B, that's the unlimited one, it's always going to cost $90. So what's going to be the most expensive, no matter what, until we get out here to 600 text messages. So six, at 600 texts, plan B, the unlimited plan, and plan A are going to be exactly the same cost. So $90.20 if we text 600 messages a month. Okay, so you can, you can see that it really depends on how much they're going to, to use it. Now, if we keep going, say a thousand texts, okay, because we're we're selling this to, you know, a teenager, popular, they just love using their phone. So follow that up. Okay, the cheapest or the first one we get to is plan B, the unlimited. So ninety dollars for that one. If we keep going up, we get to plan C, the red, and it's gonna cost us a hundred dollars. And if we keep going. If we chose plan A, which seems like the cheapest, right? Because you're only paying, it's just $29.95 a month plus 10 cents for text. Sounds great. But if you text a thousand messages, you're going to have to pay $130 a month. So at first, it may not seem like plan B is the cheapest, but it is definitely cheaper if you're going to be texting a lot. So it's a difficult question to answer because it really does depend on how many messages. So for an answer for part B, just choose one of those that I went over. So if you say, um, you know, 200 messages, if you think the, the customer is going to text 200 messages, then you would recommend plan A. So you can write that. So if the so if the customer I'm not going to be able to fit it, but just write it on yours. So if the customer sends 200 messages, I recommend cuz we're the salesperson I recommend plan A. Okay, so now if we just change that, um, same sentence, okay? If the customer sends 600 messages, I would recommend which one? Okay, so the, the one that we get to first, which is the red one, so plan C. Okay, and then if I... If the customer sends 1,000 messages a month, I recommend plan B. Okay? So what, there's three options. Or there's more than this, but there's three that I'm giving you. So just choose one and use it. But the most important thing is, is to understand that, um, well, in real life, one... Um, just because the monthly, the initial cost may be less, it doesn't mean you're actually going to pay less when your bill comes. So keep this in mind as you, you know, start paying for your own stuff as an adult. Um, but for the math problem, yeah, it also depends on how many text messages. So that's some information that you're going to need, and it doesn't give us that. So in the problem, if it said, you know, your customer plans on on texting this, you know, 650 messages a month, then which plan would be the best? Well, then we could easily recommend plan C, but we don't have that. It just asks for general information based off of our, our data. Okay, so let's, let's move on. Okay, so this one, um, we can use graph paper on the next page and then it looks like we're going to 
be graphing lines from two points. So number one, we have line A and line B, and we have some points that are that those lines go through, and then we want to find where the two lines cross. Okay, so this is definitely gonna we're gonna need some graph paper for this. So we have um, for line A we have two comma four and then negative three comma five. Okay, so we're gonna need some negative numbers. Um, looks like we have negatives on all of these, and the numbers are not too big. So on my graph paper, I'm going to split it um, into four quadrants. So let's just, uh, let's see, maybe this one. And here. Okay, so um, let me just move that up a little bit. It's right on the line. Okay, so here's yeah, X and Y. All right, so let's graph some points. And I'm going to do line A in red. And let's go back and get those points again. So 2, 4, that's our first one, so 2, 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm just going to use each box as 1. I'm not going to put all my numbers because it's going to get really messy, but each box is 1. So 2 comma 4. Okay, and then negative 3 comma 5. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so there's our two points for line A. Just going to leave it like that for now. Line B, let's do in green. And it's 9, 11. So 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then negative 5, comma, negative 11. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. All right, so visualize this. If we connect those two green points and we also connect the two red, those two lines would definitely cross. So we're looking for that point where the two lines intersect or cross. So using a ruler, you're going to connect with a straight line these points that we drew. So we're making two separate lines. We're not connecting all the dots. We're just making two separate lines that go through these points. And it looks like they cross right there. But I do not really see how that is a um, defined point. But I don't know if it asks. Let's just double check. Uh, find the point where the two lines intersect. Okay, and it's kind of in between the grid. So let's see if we can estimate. So it's this point right there. And let's just double check our coordinates for these points, just to make sure we didn't make a mistake. So 2 comma 4, 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 2 comma 4. And this one's at 1, 2, 3, 3 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 3 comma 5. Make sure that's right. Yep. And then 9 comma 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 comma 11 okay and then negative 5 negative 11 negative 5 negative 11 1 2 3 4 5 and then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 negative 5 negative 11 okay so that looks right but again unless my lines are a little bit off, 
I don't really see that it's crossing. It, I, would, I would imagine that it would cross where the grid lines are. I mean, typically that would be the case, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, in the real world, it, it's, yeah, it's almost never like that. Uh, but usually math problems, math class, um, it is usually right on. So it doesn't look like it is. So let's just, unless I made a mistake, which is possible because I'm still human. Um, okay, so this point would be at 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to go 4.25, comma, and then 1, 2, 3.5. And there are other ways, actually, to graph this. Um, being an 8th grade math class, we haven't really spent time um, writing equations from two points, but you can write an equation without doing any graphing, and then you can solve this algebraically, and then find your answer that way instead of graphing it. And that's one way to do it. So anyway, um, yeah, we don't need to worry about that. Again, really, this is just understanding. This is systems of equations. So understanding, um, one, how to graph lines from two points, and then also how to find the point of intersection. And if you can do that, then that's great. That's perfect. That's all we need to know before moving on to next year. So um, continue this. You can use the same graph and just fill it up. Just again, if it doesn't come out perfect, you can estimate. Um, but again, you know, when I see this, I will see that point and I will know that that you were able to find the point where those two lines cross. Okay, so our last piece. Um, again, these are kind of problems where, um, yeah, I'm going to do the, I'm going to solve it, and then you're going to finish the rest. So we have just an addition problem. We rewrite it, negative 23.5 plus, all right, so here we have a mixed number and then a decimal. So in order to combine these, we either need to make both of them into some sort of fraction or both of them into a decimal. Uh, because that fraction is one half, I'm just going to change that to 2.5. And we're just going to add, okay? But we have a negative 23.5 instead of a positive. So really, we're going to subtract. So I'm just going to subtract, so 20, and then we'll worry about the sign in a moment. So 23.5. And we're just going to subtract. So if the signs are different, we're, we're really subtracting. Okay, and then that's 0. Okay, and then that's 1, and that's 2. So it's 21. Okay, so our answer is 21.0, but it's negative because we started out with more negatives. Okay, so there's, yeah, use any strategy. Okay, remember, so I'm going to do... Um, a, a version of this without the decimal just to kind of illustrate why it's still negative. So this is um, kind of using algebra tiles. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to show the actual tiles, but I'm just going to put negatives. I'm going to put 23 of them. So just forget the decimal for now. So there's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So there's 23 negatives. We're going to combine that with two positives. So do the positives in blue. So we have one, two. Okay, so we're just going to basically, we're just dumping all that into a bowl. We're combining it, right? So that's what plus means, combining it. And then what happens is we have zero pairs. So a positive and a negative, that makes zero. So that's that's gone. Okay, so that's gone. So if we get rid of those, what do we have left over? We have 10, 20, 1, and they're all negatives. So that's how we get a negative for our answer. Okay, so, um, you know, the story part. So think about, think about what's going on here. You start off with negative, and then you're adding this new amount. So it could be... Um, you know, maybe you were 
scuba diving at 23.5 feet below the surface of the water and you came up another 2.5 feet to look at something that, that could be it or it's really cold and you know in the next hour it increased by 2.5 degrees okay anything it's up to you as long as you're showing that something started off you know as a negative value and it's getting closer to a positive value it's increasing so that's the most important thing all right so that's it for day three